Hey racers, it's Sherpa Dave here with this week's ZRL Race Recon. This is week three, and we move from Watopia over to New York City to tackle the New York City KOM after party, which is a bit of a mouthful, and it's a bit of an event. We've got a lot to unpack this week, so let's dive right in. This route is best thought of as three laps of the Gotham Grind Reverse, then up to the top of the KOM for a hilltop finish. I wish I'd known ahead of time that this was three laps of the same thing and then a hill climb because I wouldn't have done all three laps and I probably wouldn't have ridden that heavy aero bike that I decided to take. I'm an idiot. Next time I'll make sure I'll research before I do the recon ride. I tried something new this week. I switched off all of the noisy windows through the Zwift interface, so all you see is the pristine New York landscape as we ride around. It looks great, but if it really gets in the way, then let me know in the comments below and I won't do that again. I think it's helpful, but really it's all about what helps you guys. As with all the after party routes, this one ends in a hilltop finish, but do not be lulled into a false sense of security that this is 30 kilometers of flat with a hill at the end. It's not. Three quarters of the meters climbed are climbed before you hit that KOM. So just be careful of that when you're thinking about the bike you're gonna ride and the way you're gonna tackle this course. Take a look at my Strava profile for the recon ride and you can see it bounces up and down for the entire ride and then of course spikes at the end for the hilltop. Let's start by taking a look at Gotham Grind Reverse. It's a figure eight. It avoids the northern loop in Central Park, which also means it avoids that big climb, but more on that later. You can see from the profile that there's no appreciable flat, there's no appreciable or significant hills, but it does roll all the way around. After the three laps, you keep going north along the side of the park, and then you loop before going into the overhead roads. After a one kilometer climb, you're gonna hit that KOM itself, and that's where the finish starts. There are so many ways you can score points this week. We hit that sprint three times, so there's first across the line and fastest through segment available for the sprint. Then you hit the KOM, and there's first across the line and fastest through segment for the KOM itself. And of course, the final points will be awarded to the fastest people through the entire course. I'm really keen to see how the KOM fastest through segment points sort themselves out. Will it be the lead group who are likely to be some heavier riders who stretch their gains on the laps? Or will some of those lighter climbers recover on the way up the hill and pass them by. That's gonna be really exciting next week. You get power-ups each time you go through the sprint and each time you go through the start-finish gate. So that's six all together. One thing to be aware of, the pens on this course start after the start-finish gate, which means the first time you go around and hit the sprint, you will not have a power-up. Bear that in mind when you're thinking about strategy. We've got three power-ups available to us next week. The first one is the aero we know and love, makes you more slippery for 15 seconds. The second one is the feather, great on hills, reduces your weight. The third one's the burrito power-up. The burrito power-up is fantastic because what it does is it removes the ability to draft from anyone within 2.5 meters of you. What that means is if you use it strategically on the sprint, it eliminates anyone's ability to draft off you and use you as a free lead out train. The route travels north out of the pens, which means it skips the start finish gate. There is a gentle hill up and then it descends down as you hit the northern part of the park and make the turn to come back down the west side. The west side has the worst of those rollers. There's a 1.5 kilometer stretch that varies between 2% and up to 7% as it ascends and then descends 
back down in just as much of an unwieldy fashion. That hill starts at 2.5, 11.5 and 20.9 kilometers into the ride. Southern Loop contains a couple of things of interest. One, you pass by but can't actually see a restaurant where I met Ronnie Woods of the Rolling Stones. This may only be of interest to me. I suspect Ronnie himself has forgotten this interaction. The other thing, of course, is the sprint. You hit the sprint to 7.3, 6.6, and 25.8 kilometers into the ride. A couple of things you need to know here. One, it is an uphill sprint, and two, it's really short. So you have to be extremely careful how you approach it and what your tactics are for winning. It's uphill, so you can't go too early, but it's short, so you have to be careful that you don't go too late. Either way, because it's uphill, you need to be going full power until you cross the line. The last main climb of each lap is right before the start finish gate. You hit this at 8.5, 17.8 and 21 kilometers into the right. Okay, we've gone round once. You'll have to go around two more times, but of course it's exactly the same. And then as we come through the gate on the third time, we run down the side of the park, and then we take the right-hand turn to go down Harlem Hill, loop back, and then go up to the overhead roads. Harlem Hill gets pretty steep. It does get to 7%. You might have a second or two where you could, in theory, super tap. I don't think it's worth it. You might disagree. Have a go. Immediately after the Harlem Hills ascent, you hit the climb. You're now at 30.2 kilometers. The climb starts shallower but then pretty soon becomes a nice straightforward 5% climb for 1.3 kilometer. Crest the hill, it goes down a little bit, up another rise, and then it's a straight shot from here to the start of the KOM. Bike choice will play a critical part of how you perform here. Let's take a look at what the options might be. Sprinters looking to capture fastest through segment points should really consider an aero bike. Yeah, it's not going to be great when you get to that hill, but it will give you a performance edge as you're hitting the sprint itself. Anyone looking to get FAL points, first across the line points, needs to be at the pointy end for the sprint. If you're going to do that, you need pretty much an all-rounder bike because you're going to have to tackle all of those hills on the, on the laps before you get to the sprint itself. I think Tron sounds perfect if you've got it available to you. If you don't, pick a general purpose bike that's decent when the grade turns upwards, but still has some aero effect. Now, fastest through segment on the climb itself. Fastest through segment means you don't have to be at the front, you just have to be fast. 
fast. So here's an idea. The fastest bike you can have is something like a tarmac with those Millenstein wheels. But of course, the tarmac with Millensteins is going to suck as you are riding the laps. So maybe what you do for fastest through segment is you start with something a little bit aero or mid-range as you're riding around and then stop, change bikes and really go up that hill as fast as you possibly can. That's something to think about before you tackle. Of course, first across the line for the KOM also nets you final finish points as well. So that really is where you want to be if you can make it. I think that means you're not going to be able to change bikes, of course. Uh, so you have to pick something that allows you to keep up with the front of the pack or as close to the front of the pack as you can for the laps and then not weigh you down as you're going up the hill. The KOM starts at 35 kilometers. You're already going to have really tired legs. The KOM averages 6.6% across the whole distance, but it's broken into three sections. Each one of those sections peaks at 17 to 19% in places. So you're going to see some real hurt as you go up here. Section one is 200 meters, averaging 10%, but peaking at 17%. Section two is 300 meters long, averaging 10% again, but it peaks at 19%. Maybe only for a split second, but 19% hurts however short a time it is. It sound right, boy. Last 700 meters starts at 1%, ramps all the way up to 17%, and then drops back down to almost flat by the time you cross the line. By almost flat, I mean the last 50 meters is 2.5%, but I guess after 19% and 17%, that feels kind of flat, right? Either way, you're gonna to have to use every last ounce of your soul to push, push, push across the line. All right, I've hit the top. I'm gonna to take my free descent because I've earned it.